Oh, pie, 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 Wackett. What's the matter with me? Why do I feel like this? It's all such a rot. And you can't get away from it. It was just the same in Africa. Were the African cats any different from the ones you know in London? Why don't you give me something different for Christmas? What would I like? I'd like to meet someone different. Yes, all right. Like the man upstairs, then. Bell, Book and Candle by John Van Druten with Beatty Edney as Gillian Holroyd. And just now, passing Gillian's window in Knightsbridge, Stephen Moore as Anthony Henderson. It is Christmas Eve. There he is, coming in now. Did you do that? But he is attractive, don't you think? Why don't I ever meet people like that? What's the matter? Want to go out? All right, then, Pie Wackett. There you are. Also starring Anne Beach, Nicholas Bolton, and Michael N. Harbour. Who's there? Oh. Miss Holroyd? Yes. My name is Anthony Henderson. I live on the floor above. I think you are my landlady. Yes. How do you do? Are you busy, or could I see you for a minute? Of course. Come in, won't you? Thanks. Take off your coat. Thanks. I won't keep you long. I imagine you're going out. I am, too. I've been getting some last-minute presents, I forgot. Christmas Eve, you know. Would you like a drink? I don't think... Well, I, I don't know that this is an altogether friendly call. Oh. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. You, uh, you've been away ever since I moved in. Is anything wrong? You should have called the agent. I did. But, well, I'm afraid it doesn't seem to have done much good. What's the trouble? The lady in the flat above me, I think she's your aunt. Yes? Well, she's been in my flat a couple of times. I found her there. And I'm afraid I don't awfully like it. No. Naturally. But how did she get in? Well, she said she found the door open, and that may have been true the first time, though I don't think so. I know it wasn't true the second well, I thought I'd better tell you now that you're back. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Is that all? Well, as a matter of fact, it's not really all. I, uh, I think your aunt is rather a peculiar lady. Hmm? I can hear her at night through the ceiling, and it sounds as if she were reciting or something. Oh, you can't hear what she says. No. And I'm sorry, but there's another thing. Her cooking... Unless she's an amateur chemist, it doesn't smell like anything I'd be willing to eat. It's not cooking. She makes things. Perfumes and lotions and things. It's not my idea of perfume. And that is all? Well, I'm sorry, but there is something else. Though I can't be sure that it's she who does it. What's that? Well, ever since I caught her in my flat and talked to the agents about it, rather firmly, I'm afraid, I imagine they spoke to her... My telephone started ringing at eight o'clock every morning, and about midnight, too, and when I answer it, there's no one there. Oh, I've talked to the engineers, but they can't trace anything. Mr. Henderson, I'm most awfully sorry. I'll talk to Aunt Queenie. She is a little eccentric, but I promise you none of this will happen again. Well, thanks, then. I uh, don't mean to be unpleasant. I'm only sorry I've not been here before. You've been travelling about, I understand. Yes, I've been in Africa. Where, in Africa? I was in Kenya and all over the place. Well, you didn't, by any chance, run into Redlich there, did you? The man who wrote that book on magic, tribal magic? No, he'd left by the time I got there. Why? Are you interested in that sort of thing? Well, not personally, but professionally. I'm a publisher. Did you publish his book? No, but I wish I had. It was sensational. <laughs> and completely bogus. They fed him with a whole lot of fake tourist stuff and he swallowed it whole. Well, I hear that he's ready to change publishers and I'd like to be his next one. I've written to him several times, but I got no answer. If you'd like to meet him... Oh, do you know him? No, but I know people who do. I can arrange it. I'd appreciate that very much. Well, 
I'll get along. You won't have that drink now. Uh, no, I mustn't. I'm late, but if I may come back some other time... Yes, of course. I'll arrange for Redlich to be here to meet you. That'd be fine. I gather he's rather eccentric. And... I say, that's interesting. Who's the painter? My brother. It's a strange face. Who is it? Do you know? It's a Brazilian girl who used to dance in a nightclub here. A place called the Zodiac. I don't know it. I don't imagine you would. Why not? Oh, because, well, it's a pretty sordid spot. But you know it. I've been there. Well, you've got visitors. I must be getting along. Oh, Aunt Queen. Hello, darling. Merry... Oh, I didn't know you had company. It's all right. This is... Oh, yes. You know each other. Yes, we have met. How do you do, Miss Holroy? How do you do? Uh, well... Don't let me drive you away. I yet. must go. Well, good night. Uh, Merry Christmas. And to you. Bye. So, you've met him after all. Do you still think he's attractive? Yes, I do. Very. Did you bring him here? No. He came here to talk to me. About you. Me? Yes, and it's no good acting innocent about it. I'm angry, really angry. Why? What have I done? You know, broken into his flat, played tricks with his telephone. That was because he reported me to the agent. I don't care what it was. You promised when I let you move in here. What harm did I do? I didn't take anything. Yes, I read his letters, but it's not as if I were going to make use of them. Though I'm tempted to do now, now that he's told on me, to you. Aunt Queenie... If you do, well, you'll be sorry. And you know I can make you sorry, too. He'd never suspect, darling. No matter what I did. Honestly, it's amazing the way people don't. I sit in the underground sometimes, or in buses, and look at the people next to me, and I think, what would you say if I told you I was a witch? And I know they'd never believe it. They just wouldn't believe it. And I giggle and giggle to myself. Well, you've got to stop giggling here. And making messes in your kitchen and reciting spells half the night. You've got to swear. Swear on the manual. Swear what? That you'll stop practicing in this house ever. You practice here? I can be discreet about it. You can't. I've other people I can turn to. Mrs. De Pass, I suppose. Yes, she's done a lot for me. Well, I wouldn't count on Mrs. De Pass if I turn against you. I'm a lot better than that old battle axe. Now... Oh, please. Not on the manual. On the manual. Come on, put your hand on it. I swear that I will not practice witchcraft ever in this house again. So help me Tagla, Salamandre, Brazo and Vesturio. I swear that I will not practice witchcraft ever in this house again. So help me Tagla, Salamandre, Brazo and Vesturio. Good. I think you're very cruel. Oh, Aunt Queen, if you'd only have a little say. And oh. hypocritical. Sometimes I think you're ashamed of being what you are. Ashamed? It's not a question of being ashamed, but... Aunt Queenie, don't you ever wish you weren't? No. That you were like those people you sit next to in the buses. Ordinary and humdrum. No, I was for years before I came into it. Well, you came in late. You know how old I was, three. And I don't hanker for it all the time, just sometimes. Darling, you're depressed. I know. I expect it's Christmas. It affects a lot of us like that. It's always upset me. I must get on with finishing the tree. You wait till you get to Zoe's party and see all your old friends again. I don't want to see my old friends again. I want something different. Well, come with me to Mrs. DePass's then. She's got some very interesting people. No, I think I'd just like to spend the evening with some everyday people for a change instead of us. With Mr. Henderson? I wouldn't mind. It's too bad he's getting married. Mm -hmm. And still, I suppose... Shall I help you with the decorations? He's getting married. Yes, quite soon. They're announcing it on New Year's Eve. Where do you want these? How do you know that? Oh, the telephone, I suppose. Yes, dear. Who's he getting married to? Do you know? I don't know her last name. Her first name's Merle. Merle. The only Merle I ever knew was a girl I was at school with. Merle Kittredge. She used to write poison pen letters... I caught her writing one about me once. 
That's why we had all those thunderstorms that spring. She was terrified of them. Oh, that was you. We had one every day for a month. It was most extraordinary. She was a nervous wreck by the end of term. And you think this might be the same girl? What was she like? Small and fair and helpless. This one's fair. He's got her photo on his desk. And appealing. And underneath a liar and a sneak and a boyfriend stealer. Did you ever know what happened to her? I think she became a decorator. This one's a decorator? Well, there's probably more than one decorator in London called Merle. And if he's engaged, that rules him out. I don't see why. I don't take other women's men. Though I would, if it were Merle Kittredge. I could find out for you. But New Year's Eve, that wouldn't leave much time. You wouldn't need time. Just a quick little potion or four words to pie whack it you once told me. Yes, but I wouldn't want him like that. That would take a challenge out of it, especially with her. Other girls can make men like them in a week without that. Why can't I? Did he seem to like you this afternoon? Not very much, no. Julian, you, you're not falling in love with him and losing your powers, are you? That isn't what this is all about. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. Oh, thank goodness. You don't believe that old wives' tale. Of course I do. It's true. They say it's true. It's the other way around. We can't fall in love. No, Kittredge. I haven't thought of her for years. Do you think, if it were she, I could do it in a week without tricks? Darling, it's no good asking me. I never could do it at all. But if it is, why don't you try a quick spell and have done with it? No, I don't say I wouldn't be tempted. But if I've got a week, I'd like to see how good I am the other way. Nicky! Oh! Darling! you come through locked doors like that. Well, it saves so much time. Saves you getting up to open the door. How are you? Fine. I'll get the sherry. Hello, Aunt Queenie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, darling. Nicky, hmm? will you do something for me? Of course. What? Buy the telephone, pencil and paper. Who? Nicky, it's a number. I want you to tie it up for me. Why? Who is it? Someone I want to pay back for something. But you can pull that one for yourself. I taught you. Yes, but I had to promise Gillian that I wouldn't in this house anymore. So would you do it for me? Anything to oblige? Now. <clears throat> Actatus catipta itapan manutus. Sloan 3955. What are you two up to? Aunt Queenie. They haven't done a thing. Whose number was that you were tying up? Oh. No one you know, dear. Just a little Christmas present for a friend. <laughs> no telephone for a week. Yeah. Oh, Nicky, when will you grow up? Pour the sherry, will you? And then we'll have presents. I'm afraid mine's pretty mingy, dear, but I've never been more broke. I, I did get into a roulette game the other day and managed to clear £20 by witching the wheel. But that doesn't go anywhere these days. I used to wonder when I was a kid why all the witches in history were always poor and miserable old men and women living in hovels when you'd have thought they could have had everything they wanted. And I've learnt why since. It's only because they weren't good enough at it any more than we are. Or else they got scared, like Jill here. She admitted to me once that she could witch the whole stock exchange if she wanted. Oh, Gillian, could you? Really, dear? Why don't you do it? She said she was afraid of the repercussions. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now, Nicky, Aunt Queenie. For you, Nicky, and for you, darling. Aunt Queenie, Gillian. You two are the hardest people to find presents for. I gave you both the same thing. A book. Tribal Magic by Sidney Redlich. They're autographed. Why? Do you know him? No, but Mrs. De Pass does. She got them for me. Well, thank you very much. I've heard a lot about it. I hope you haven't read it. I have, but I'm very glad to have it. Thank you, Auntie. Mm. Oh, careful with those, Nicky. Those are records. Oh, thanks, darling. What are these? A man at a party in Nairobi. We took some recordings of the incantation. Oh, how wonderful. What are they for? Try them and see. You'll be surprised. Like to have music come out of your ears? Oh, no. <laughs> That's the least of them. I'll, I'll take them to Natalie's party with me. Do you think they'll help me make any headway with her? Well, this man had quite a way with him. 
He had a mink as his familiar. Oh, talking of familiars, where's Pie Wacket? I, I brought him a mouse. Not a magic one. No, no, dear. Just plain. He's outside. Oh, this is lovely, darling. Simply lovely. Spanish lace. What does it do? It makes you fascinating. You mean? No, Aunt Queenie, I'm afraid it has no powers. I just thought it was pretty. Oh, it is very pretty. I love it. There's something that has got powers for you, Aunt Queenie. It's an unguent. You feel colours. Quite a sensation. Oh. And this, Virgilian, for summoning. You just paint it on an image, or, or a drawing, or a photograph, they said, of anyone you want, and then set light to it, oh. and they have to come. I, I hope it works for you. I couldn't even make it light. Try it, now. All right. Put the lights out, Nicky. <laughs> oh, go on, Nicky. Use the switch. <laughs> now, whom do we want here? Him? No, I know. Who? This man. Redledge? What on earth for? I want to meet him. I promised to introduce him to somebody. I thought I'd find someone who knew him, but this will save a lot of time. It's got his picture on the back, Auntie. Do you mind if I cut it off? Not if I can stay and watch. How soon is it supposed to work? Oh, it depends on how far they've got to come, but within 24 hours nowadays, anyway, I should think. They'll probably turn up at your party tonight. Auntie, the big ashtray. There's a little brush in the cork. I found it. Any words? They said not. All right, then. Got a match? Ooh. Mm hmm. Go. You're a marvel. Oh, Ooh. not already. Jill, that's genius. Oh. <laughs> no, of course it isn't. Go and see who it is. Yes? Is Miss Holroyd in? Oh, Mr. Henderson. Come in. I'm sorry if I'm disturbing you. Oh, you're having indoor fireworks? Oh, no, no. It's just some nonsense that my brother gave me. This is my brother, Mr. Henderson. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Please go on with what you were doing. It's all right. We've finished, really. Is there something I can do for you? I just wondered if I might use your telephone. Mine's really turned into a problem, child. It's completely out of order now. Of course. Help yourself. Well, thank you. I used mine just after I left here, and it was fine. And for the last 15 minutes, I've been getting nothing but a lot of hiccups in my hand. I really must be going. I'm engaged. May I wait just a minute? Of course. Would you like to report your line? Oh, thanks. Mickey, mm -hmm. that piece of paper you put in your pocket, uh, I'd like to see it for a minute. Uh, hello, engineer. Here. Yeah. I want to report a line out of order. Sloan 3955. It was Nicky. I know. I don't know. I, I just can't get the dialing tone. But I think it's worked it out wonderfully. Yeah. Good luck. Well, um, goodbye, Mr. Henderson. Oh, goodbye. Oh, do you mind if I leave these records here? I I'm going to a cocktail party first, and I don't want them to get broken. You know, under all the coats on the bed. I I'll pick them up on my way to Natalie. I won't be here. No, I can get in. Oh, well, all right, then. Well, really, if Nicky can, I... I know, Auntie. It's not fair. It's not a bit fair. Take her away, Nicky. Goodbye, Mr. Henderson. Mm. I hope your telephone gets well soon. <laughs> I'll just try once more, then I'll go to you. There's no hurry. You're going out, aren't you? Later. But it's not important. Ah, luck. But you don't need to go. Can I speak to Miss Kittredge, please? <sighs> Merle, it's me. I got delayed. I tried to get you, but the phone's gone off again. I'm getting a taxi in two shakes, but... What? Well, that's wonderful. Bless you. I'll meet you there, then. What is it? What's your idea? Tonight. Announce it. Tonight. Mm. <laughs> wonderful. I thought you were so keen on New Year's Eve. Well, that's fine. Let's tell them all. Yes, I've got everything. All the presents. Yours, theirs, everybody's. All right. Fine. Quarter of an hour. I can't wait. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> darling. Oh, I say, is that your cat? I've seen him on the stairs here lately, watching me come in and out. What's his name? Pie Racket. How do you do? <laughs> oh. Did he scratch you? Mm. Just a little round hole. Bad cat. Well, I've bothered you long enough. Won't you have that drink now? Thanks, but I'm terribly sorry, but I am late, and tonight's a sort of important night. 
So, if you don't mind... No, of course not. Thanks all the same. Well... Pie, 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 Wackett. This is Mr. Henderson. Mr. Anthony Henderson. Rector of Emersalibat Quattare's disaster. I beg your pardon? I was uh, talking to Pie, Wackett. I think he wants to go out. Let me help you with that. Oh, yes. Please. Better? Oh, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Say something. What? Anything. It doesn't matter. I just want to hear your voice. Do you like my voice? No. I don't like anything about you. Mm. I'm just insane over you. All of you. You ought to know that by now. Don't you? Well... Don't you? Well, you made it charmingly apparent. <sighs> you know, there's a wonderful, suspended, timeless feeling to this moment. And the two of us like this, I, I feel... Spellbound. Stay like that. I don't ever want to move. What are you thinking? Nothing. Not a thing. And you? Nothing either. I can't think. Certainly not this close to you. I've got to start soon, though. Very soon. What about? A lot of things. I think I'll have a drink. Can I get you one? No, thanks. Do you know what time it is? No. It's ten o'clock, a good three hours since I came in here, since I went to the door to leave. Well? Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I was on my way to a party. And you found something you'd rather do? That, my girl, is an understatement. I found something I couldn't resist doing. You don't need to explain to me. It's fantastic. Julian, tell me. Just what has it meant to you? Meant? These three hours. They've been enchantment. I know it doesn't make sense. We hardly talk, but somewhere I've got an idea that I must be in love with you. Are you at all in love with me? I like you more than I can say. That wasn't what I asked you. Do we have to talk about it? Yes, I've got to know. Why? There are people waiting for me, wondering where the hell I am. <sighs> There's a whole future that's either got completely shot to bits or else... Well, I've got to do some talking. Some pretty good talking. And I'd like to know where I stand, where we stand. What do you want to do? Just at the moment, I never want to stop seeing you. Is it possible that I can never stop seeing you? You can see me all you want. I don't know whether this is one of those things that burn themselves out, but if it is... Well, it's a hell of a fire. I know that. Perhaps that's the kind that burns out quickest. I don't know. I know it's lunatic to talk about love yet, but I just wish I could be sure... Of what? ...whether this is it. If it's not, it's a pretty good facsimile. I think that for me, too. And that will do for the answer. And now... I think I'd like to use your telephone. Go ahead. And this time, if you don't mind, I'd like to be left alone. Of course. You're amazing. More than amazing. Uh, Tony, it has hit me. Quite hard. Is that Miss Carlson's house? Can I speak to Miss Kittridge, please? And uh, is there somewhere she could sit down? I mean, where she can talk without being disturbed. Well, this is me. I'm out somewhere. You can come back now. Well? It's done. 
want to hear about it? Do you want to tell me? I'd rather not. You needn't. You're wonderful, taking it like this. Are you unhappy about it? No. I ought to be, I suppose. But I'm not. At all. Do you know, we haven't eaten. No. Let's go out and have caviar and champagne. Mm. How does that sound? It sounds lovely. We can be back here for midnight. Are you sentimental about Christmas? Part of me is... The other part hates it. It's so ridiculous that I know nothing about you. Nothing at all. What do you want to know? At the moment, nothing except about us. Tell me, when did you first know that you liked me? The moment I saw you, coming down the stairs three days ago, I thought, that's for me. Oh, you did, did you? And you did nothing about it. What can a nice girl do? You could have asked me down for a drink. I offered you a drink earlier this evening. Three times, actually. You wouldn't have it. Isn't that extraordinary? I really didn't notice you. That sounds awful. I'm not hurt. Oh, all right, Pie, out you go. Was that why you offered to arrange for me to meet Redlich as a sort of come on? I suppose, in a way. Well, now, you don't need to. No, I'd still like to meet him. You'll meet him. Oh, you've done something about it already. I've set things in motion. When are you meeting him? Soon. Damn, don't answer that. Do you mind if I do? No, I don't mind, but why? Oh, just an idea. We're going out anyway, but close the bedroom door. Oh, yes. Miss Holroy. Yes. You don't know me, but I'm Sidney Redlich. Yes, of course. I've seen your picture on your book. Come in. Well, this is the damnedest thing. What is it? Well, I'm sorry. We were just talking about you. You weren't expecting him, were you? Not quite like this. This is Mr. Henderson. Mr. Anthony Henderson. Oh, you've been writing to me. And you've not been answering. <laughs> How do you do? Yeah, I've been up in Skegness the last two weeks. Only got back a couple of hours ago. I know Christmas Eve isn't really the right time for a call, but I was sitting in a pub around the corner just now going through my pocketbook and I came across your address. Who gave you my address? Some people in Africa. Yeah, I, I wrote to them about a mask I'd seen, and they wrote back and told me that you'd bought it. It's a little long black mask with gold eyes. Oh. Uh, I was wondering if you'd let me photograph it for an article I'm doing. It's coming with the things I sent by sea. <laughs> you don't happen to know what the mask is, do you? No, what? It's just one of the most potent witch masks that I ran across over there. Oh, they told me that, but... But you didn't believe it. Hmm? No, nobody does. Yeah, I suppose you wouldn't feel like offering a poor author a glass of wasso, would you? Of what? Wasso. Christmas cheer. Drink if you wanted to. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Tony. Whiskey or gin? It doesn't make a bit of difference. And what with it? Nothing with it, just it. I see. Julian? No, thank you. Excuse me, I... Oh, you're still here. Uh, yes. Nicky, this is Mr. Redlich, Mr. Sidney Redlich, my brother. Well, now, fancy that. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, eh? I must send the shop a testimonial. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Mm. You writing anything more about witchcraft, Mr. Redlich? Well, I'm just getting ready to. Well, that interests me a great deal. Oh. And this one, Miss Holroyd, is going to be really hot stuff. More witchcraft. Where this time? Here. Here? In London. Witchcraft at home. Now, what do you think of that for a title? Mm -hmm. Sounds provocative. What's it mean? It means exactly what it says. Witchcraft at home. At home, right? Yeah. Is it? Yes, certainly, laddie. You probably thought that sort of thing was confined to the tropics and the jungles. If you thought about it at all. Well, so did I until now. You probably won't believe this, but here, all around you, there's a whole community devoted to just that. That's a very novel idea. Well, my dear, it's the truth. How do you know? Tell us. Well, I've met a couple, uh, met them through my other book. Uh, they let me in on a few things. Well, then from there, well, I've made it my business to find out. You two have got no idea. They have their regular hangouts. Cafes, bars, restaurants. Uh, did you ever hear of a nightclub called the Zodiac? Yes. Well, isn't that the place you were talking about? That painting. What painting? That one. That's right. Hmm. She used to dance there. Uh, who did that? He did. 
And I suppose it never occurred to you that she was one. Hmm? No. Did you ever look at the proprietor there? Well, there's a limb of Satan, if ever I saw one. Now, don't tell me he's a witch, too. Well, when it's a man there called Warlocks. Oh. Yeah. Now, I'd like to have this painting for an illustration. I'm oh, sure Jill would lend it to you. Go on, this is fascinating. No, you, you don't take it seriously. Oh, <laughs> oh, but we, we do. do. <laughs> um, tell us more uh, about them and, and their doings. Do they have orgies? We won't go into that now. Uh, there's a business side to it, too. You think of witches meeting on a blasted heath, don't you? Well, one of their main places is just off the Tottenham Court Road. It's an old music hall. There's another one in Islington. Uh, that's an old Methodist chapel they've taken over. And sometimes they have meetings in the basement at Caxton Hall. Uh, you wouldn't believe what's going on right under your nose. To talk about spy rings and organised vice, they're nothing compared with. Jill, I wonder if we know any. I wonder. I bet you do. I'm sure I could tell you names that... Oh, do. Oh, no, chum. I'm careful. I've got to be. I don't want to find myself with my house burning down or stricken with the ague. You mean they'd do that if you told? Well, they'd do a lot worse than that. That's why there can be no names in my book. Of course, I, I've got protection up to a point. Protection? There's a woman, uh, quite high up in the movement. She's considered one of the best there is. I've got her on my side. Who's that? A uh, Mrs. Do... <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't give her a name. No, she is pretty open about it, sort of flaunts it. You must have seen this woman. She goes to first nights in robes with cabalistic warrior columns all over them. A Mrs. Depart. That's right. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to a party at her house a bit later. Oh, I'll tell you another couple of things about them. Witches don't cry, shed tears, I mean, or blush. Oh, really? Yeah. And they almost all have pets. What they call familiars. You know, the sort of familiar spirits who carry out their master's bidding. Tony, I think we ought to go. Yes. Oh, I'm boring people. Oh, no, not at all. I'm quite sure there's a lot of it around. Like influenza. All right, all right. <laughs> Make fun of it. I'm used to that. Now, if you'd let me know when that mask turns up, I'll give you my telephone mm. number. Oh, give it to me, too, will you? Yeah. Nicky, mm -hmm. you know where Aunt Queenie was going tonight? Uh, no, where? Oh, yes. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, what do you want me to do? Stop it, can you? What do you think? Well. There you are, Miss Holroyd. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to have to turn you out. Mm. But we are going out. Tonight. I'll telephone you. Uh, you, Redlich, I'd like to hear some more about this book. I'll, I'll walk along with you. Oh, we'll stop in for a drink somewhere. Fair enough. I'll be in touch with you. All right. A splendid Christmas to you. Uh, there's a place in the Fulham Road called the Cloven Hoof, I'd like to show. Fascinating. Uh, what an extraordinary evening. He seemed to think that I was one of them. Oh. <laughs> and now, if we're going to have our first meal together... I'll get my things. What are you going to do with all those presents? Have them sent round in the morning, I suppose. With apologies. Most of them. All these presents are none for you. Give me one. Which? Anyone. Shut your eyes and dip. Go on. How extraordinary. Why? What is it? It's a locket. I, I was giving it to someone. Do you still want to give it to them? No. It's beautiful. You think so, too? Oh. It belonged to my... Oh, damn it. Why can't one say my mother without sounding sentimental? <laughs> You can imagine what's inside. You? Yes, aged. I should have met you earlier. <laughs> I was certainly healthier. Shall I put it on for you? If you're really sore. I am. Well, then, thank you. Very much. Shall we go? Let's. Again. Wonderful. Always wonderful. Darling, come here. Come here. Yes? Mm. Mm, I've been wanting to do that for the last three hours since before lunch. Mm. What a lovely Saturday afternoon. 
lunching in Soho, going to an art gallery, walking across a park. It's incredible what a bit of magic can do to the most ordinary things. Magic? What do you mean, magic? Well, isn't it? Two weeks ago tonight we met, and they've been magic weeks. I know, they have. They've been exactly that. Mm. Oh, no, Tony. We're going to have tea. Be an angel and put the kettle on, will you? First, right? Mm. Oh, why? Tony, what do you do with all those pins you're always picking up? Nothing. It's just sheer superstition. I'll throw this in the fire. No. Why not? It's bad luck. Yes, I'm superstitious too. Give it to me. And what are you going to do with it? Oh, keep it. It'll come in handy. What for? Oh, different things. Consistent, aren't you? Superstitious, yet you'll have this thing, mask, on the wall after what Red Witch said about it. What did they tell you it was supposed to be? Oh, a ceremonial mask for disciplining witches. Ones who don't conform. Conform to what? The rules, I suppose. I don't know. I just think it's friendly. Well, uh, not to me, I think. Boo! <laughs> Look, darling, we've spent all our time together, all our meals and everything. It's just occurred to me there must be lots of people you're neglecting. No one I care about. I've been neglecting everything. There's a whole stack of manuscripts piled up by my bed, only I never seem to get there anymore. <laughs> Why don't you go to your party tonight? I might join you there later. Oh, no. Why not? You'd hate it. Do you know, I haven't met a single friend of yours. And you're not going to. They're awful. <laughs> what are they like? Like? They're irresponsible and malicious and unprincipled and fun. Well, that's something. I'm not sure that's the worst part. Gillian, when are we going to get married? What's the matter? I must have missed a chapter somewhere. Darling, after the last two weeks, you can't say this is so sudden. You know I'm in love with you. Marriage is the next logical step. Doesn't it seem like that to you? Jill, why are you dodging this? I don't think I'm cut out for marriage, that's all. In what way? The way I've lived. How have you lived? Selfishly, restlessly, one thing after another. But there is a time to stop. There is a moment when we get the chance to go one of two ways... Forever. This is it for me. I hope for you, too. No? I don't know. It would mean giving up a whole way of living and thinking. I've sometimes wondered if I could and wished I could. I know we started this abruptly, but that doesn't mean it can't last. Oh, I know it can last. That's not what's worrying me. What is? I told you, me. So long as it's not me. It isn't. Then let me do the worrying. Well... You're tempting me. That's better. The kettle must be boiling by now. They don't boil if you watch them. Hey. I wonder, Pie Wackett. I wonder if I could. Suppose he found out afterwards that would be bad. <laughs> and what would all the others say? What would that mask say? Don't look at me like that. I will if I want to. Here we are. Um, Tony, I will. I'd like to hear that again. I will. I want to. Oh, darling. 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 What do we say next? <laughs> Where shall we live? Shall I buy this place from you? Then we can throw the other tenants out and unconvert it. I've only got a lease on this house. And anyway, I'd like to start somewhere fresh. What? Again? I can't keep pace with your activities. An art gallery in Chelsea, a herb shop, bookshop, Africa. Tony, don't ask me questions about my past. Is it so lurid? I don't mean it like that, but... Well, my life has been sort of rapish, at least seen through your eyes. And I don't want to talk about it. Darling, I just feel jealous of the things about you that I don't know. I know you're not jealous in the remotest degree about anything. You knew there was another woman right up to the moment that we met, yet you've never asked me one thing about her. Yes, but that, whatever it was, is over. I know it is. Even so, a little twinge of jealousy would be flattering. I've wondered if you've seen her since. I am interested, really. 
just to know how something works. How what works? Something like us. What happened to us. I wonder if you could still be with her. I have no idea. I don't want to. But could you? Darling, being in love with someone else doesn't make one impotent. It just makes one disciplined. Suppose she vamped you. Well, lie about on couches with bunches of grapes in her mouth, you mean? Suppose I were away or something, and she asked you. And don't tell me women don't ask, because they do. Have you ever asked anyone? Not asked, but made it obvious, I think. I did to you, didn't I? You are jealous. You didn't really think I couldn't be. My worst thing, almost. That and trying to get something for nothing. Eating my cake and having it, too. But I'm going to be different from now on. I promise you, I swear it. I don't want you any different. But I want to be different, quite different. I won't stand for it. Oh. I wonder if two people have ever had a romance like this before. Very few. Very few. Damn few. Yes, damn few. Oh, hell, there's life breaking in. Tell it to go away. We've got to start meeting it again sometime. And now we've got the rest of our lives together. All right. I'll be polite to it. Nicky. Hello there. And Mr. Henderson, I've been telephoning you. I thought you might be here. I say, that's a new face, isn't it? Is that the mask Redlitz was talking about? Looks just like that German governess we used to have. <laughs> You're quite a stranger. Oh, that's right. Not since Christmas Eve. I've got a surprise for you. Hmm? For you both. Sid's new book, Sidney Redlitz. What, already? Oh, not all of it. This is just an outline in the first two chapters, but it will give you an idea. That's pretty quick. Oh, we've been at it night and day. Did you say we? Oh, yes, dear. Witchcraft Around Us by Sidney Redlitz and Nicholas Holroyd. You don't mean you're writing it with him? <laughs> Nicky, really? But, what do you know about that sort of thing? I know as much as he does. You pick things up. Well, this is a surprise, isn't it, Jill? Yes, it is. We've got a surprise for you, too. Hmm? Think you could stand me as a brother-in-law? <laughs> well, I never. Oh. Bless your hearts. Mm. Congratulations, mm. darling. Mm. Uh, uh, both of you. Yeah. That was pretty quick, wasn't it? Tony, I'd like to talk to Nicky. Do you mind? Well, I'll go up to my flat for a bit. And for a change. Uh, why, why don't you look at that book now? No. Uh, why not? won't take you long. It's good. Well, I might glance at it. Good enough. Bless you, Jill. Mm. Well, well, well. Marriage, no less. Uh-huh. What fun. It is. Very. Between us all, he's going to have quite a time. Between us all? Well, you and me and my book. I'm going to need your help. You know, I've kept up with all the manifestos. Oh, invent anything you like. What's it matter? Oh, I can't. Sid's a stickler for accuracy. What? Nicky, you're not giving him the truth. Of course I am. Oh, darling, he was so idiotic that first evening. He took me to all the places. Kept on pointing out people to me. Well, naturally, I knew most of them, but I gave them the sign, the humans around, and they played up. But he went on and on, wanting to take me to Mrs. De Passes, and so, finally... You told him about yourself? It's going to pay beautifully. I gather Tony has made Sydney a very generous offer. You mean that's what Tony is reading upstairs now? Hmm. You can't publish that book. I won't let you. What harm can it do? There are no names in it. But your name is going to be on it, and it's too close to home to be safe. Nicky, Tony doesn't know about me, and he's not going to. Oh, I suppose you're going to tell me you're renouncing, too. I have renounced. Since when? Well, actually, since about ten minutes ago. Though I haven't done anything for a fortnight. Uh, you don't mean this marriage is on the level. You haven't, you haven't fallen in love with him. No, of course not. But I'm cutting all that right out. You can't cut it out. It's something you were born with. There's not a thing you can do about it. I needn't practice it. And I won't. Oh, you wait till the first temptation comes along. The first thing you really want, then it'll be just this once. And that'll lead to another and another... Not for me. My mind's made up. That's why you've got to stop that book. I'm sorry, dear, but no. It's important to me. It's more important to me. No, dear, I'm sorry, but quite firmly, no. Very well, then. I'll have to do something about it. <laughs> what did I just tell you? I thought you'd retired. I'll make this a farewell appearance to stop that book. We've got people on our side, remember. <laughs> Mrs. DePass. Well, 
I'm a lot better than that old battle axe. She can take it up higher, to the big boys. She'll get the whole organisation behind it. <laughs> that bunch? There isn't one of them can give anyone a flat tyre without having to go to bed for a week. Now... Will you bring me every copy that's in existence, or am I going to have to go to work? You know I can, don't you? Well, what's it to be? Yes or no? Not for the world. Very well, then. Pie, 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 whack it. Eloas, bejulet, fidibus. I don't want that book to be published, do you hear? Not by any. Jill, look out. And that'll teach you to threaten me with the organisation. Girly, your little romance is coming to a sticky end. Tony's going to know all about you, and before the day is out, too. Oh, oh you're still here, Nicky. Good. Hello, there's Pi Wacky again. What are you going to do with Pi now? Hmm? I'm going to put him out. Oh, I, I meant now that you two are getting married. <laughs> oh, did she tell you he doesn't like me? Can't bear me to touch him for some reason. Did you read it? How did you like it? I don't know if you want me to talk in front of Gillian. Yes, why not? Jill, I'm afraid Nicky here has been a bad boy. I don't think Aunt Queenie's the only member of your family who goes in for practical jokes. You think this book's a joke? It's insane. <laughs> You ought to call it what every young witch ought to know. How you imagine for one moment that I believe in it. <laughs> I'd just been talking to Redlitz on the phone and he said that Nicky had convinced him that he was one of them. Mm. I think that was going a little far. Did he tell you how he got here in the first place? Yes, I had all that. Uh, luminous paint or, or something. And all your references, including a Mrs. Depass, who seems to be a sort of head witch or something. <laughs> but now the joke's over. So you'd better tell Redlich the whole thing was a leg pull, or this book will have to find another publisher. No, I don't think any other publisher would be any good either. Now, do you, Jill? Nicky, what are you up to? Oh, not a thing, darling. All right, Tony, I suppose it was silly of me to think you'd believe it like that. Well, goodbye, and no hard feelings. You're an ass, Nicky. You better have this. Uh, so long, Jill. Hmm? You'll be hearing from me. Later in the day. Is anything the matter? No. Well, you look peculiar. There's nothing wrong between you and Nicky. No. Tony, I've got to tell you something. Not if it's to prove to me that Nicky is a witch, no. The word is warlock. Oh, well, we don't have to get technical about it. You don't believe there are such things at all? No, dear, and it's no good trying to make me. No matter who told you? Look... Nobody's threatening you with anything, are they? Nicky, isn't Is he threatening to tell something about you to me? Yes. Well, that's easily dealt with. Tell me yourself. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, what is it? Something in your past that you don't want questions asked about? Tony, will you listen quite quietly for a moment, not interrupt or anything? Of course. You don't believe in anything supernatural? Oh, God, we're not back on that again. How about superstitions? You believe in them? Those don't mean anything. Then why do you defer to them? Habit, perhaps. Or is it just that you won't take a chance? In case there were rules or something governing those things, yes? Well, for the sake of argument, perhaps. Tony, there are rules. And it's just a question of choosing which set of rules you live by. The laws of gravity or a whole different lot of rules that can set those aside. Well, do you know a whole different set of rules? Yes, I do. Rules and shortcuts to getting your own way. And the people who use those shortcuts are the people who, I've got to say it, live by magic. Magic? Tony, there is such a thing as magic. I know. I can do it. You can? Yes. Well, do it then. Show me some. No, I mustn't. It would go on and on. It always does. I've broken down once this afternoon already. You have, have you? What did you do? I stopped that book being published. Oh, no, you didn't. That's my province. Sorry to spoil your story, but I decided I wasn't going to publish it after I'd read two pages. I didn't say I stopped you publishing it. I stopped anyone publishing it. How very useful. What did you do? I can't tell you. It would sound too silly. Oh, no, come on. What did you do? I put on a spell. And how does one put on a spell? I used Pie Wacket. Oh, you mean you spoke to him about it? And what's he supposed to do? Go out and call on all the publishers and talk them out of it? Is, is Pie Wacket a witch too? He's a familiar. <laughs> He's familiar? 
I'll tell you other things. The luminous paint. That was true. Only it wasn't Nicky. It was I. You saw me doing it, even. You thought it was indoor fireworks. And you're coming here. You remember how that happened? Your telephone went out of order. That was Providence. No, that was Nicky. He put it out of order. Well, I've heard of repairmen. <laughs> Why would Nicky do that? As a prank. That's what he uses it all for, mainly. Playing tricks. Turning all the traffic lights at Piccadilly Circus green at the same moment. He's never taken it seriously. Most people don't. But it can be very serious. Do you believe in the kind of God with a long, white beard? No. But you do believe that if you're in trouble, real trouble, facing death or something, there is something you could appeal to that could help you? I suppose, so. Yeah. And even if you don't think of it as a man, somewhere lingeringly, there is still a picture of that long white beard. Well, with me, lingeringly, it's horns and a tail. Well, the devil that people sell their souls to? Yes. What does the devil do with the souls? That's something I've always wanted to know. It used to worry me, too. The nearest I ever got to understanding it was that it was like votes. He needs votes. Supporters. Jill, this is all table-turning nonsense. All those things you talked about, Nicky's business with the telephone, those things are coincidences. They look like that. They have to. They can't do it any other way. I can't turn this house into the Taj Mahal. It doesn't work that way. There has to be a rational explanation if you want it. Then I'll take the rational explanation. Just as you took the rational explanation of us there. Now I've said it. You mean that was... Yes. That was. No, really. Well, was it rational what happened to you here on Christmas Eve? It happened. How? Think back. What did happen? You came in here to use the telephone. The number was engaged. Then you got through. Can you remember what happened next? I remember every single thing. I made my call. You went into the kitchen. You came back with the cat. Go on. I went to the door, turned back, and suddenly I seemed to see you for the first time. And you were in my arms. You've left out something. What did I do before that? You didn't do anything. You sat down, you talked to the cat. Oh, damn it. I won't believe it. What made you suddenly take me in your arms? Because... I wanted to. More than I've ever wanted to do anything in my whole life. And you think you made me do it? Why? What for? Because I wanted you to, so I did that. You mean I had nothing to do with it at all? I'm sorry, Tony. It's bad. The whole thing's bad. It's habit-forming. It's like abusing influence. And it can destroy you as a person. Well, now I've told you. And I don't have to worry about anyone else telling you now. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't believe a word of it, do you? I certainly do. You do? I believe you cast an absolutely wonderful spell on me, and I'm crazy about it. Mm. Oh, Dan, don't answer me. Oh, darling, now that we've got the rest of our lives together... Oh, Aunt Queenie. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, Tony, too. No, darling, I'm not staying. I really don't know why I came, but I felt an urge, a simple, irresistible impulse. Did you meet Nicky by any chance? Nicky? Yes, I passed him in the street. He waved to me, rather a funny kind of wave. A drink. Ah, dear Nicky. Oh, Perhaps I came to tell you I shan't see you tonight. I promised I'd dine with Mrs. Depart. Why, what's the matter, Tony? Did you say Mrs. Depart? Why, do you know her? Auntie, I'd better tell you. Tony knows. I've told him. Oh, how wonderful. And is he sympathetic? Now, wait one minute. Let's get this straight. You mean she thinks she's one, too? Yes, Tony. How else do you think I got into your flat when the door was locked? You mean you can get through locked doors? Usually. Could you get through that one if I locked it? I think so. Good. Come on, then. Uh, uh, um. oh, no, 
I mustn't. I can't. No. <laughs> no, I suspected that. Well, Gillian, you do it then. No, Auntie, I've stopped. Tony and I are getting married. <gasps> oh, how lovely. How exciting. But if he knows... That makes no difference. I've stopped. Oh, well. I'm sorry, Tony, about the door. Why? What's that? Pie whack it. It must be his dinner time. Oh, goodness, it's long past. I forgot all about him. Excuse me. Well, we shall miss you here. Oh, how nice of you. I know it's hard to understand at first, Tony. You see, Gillian's been in it ever since she was tiny. And then she started me, or I found out. I don't know how much she's told you about it all, about that spell she put on you. Yes, I had all that. Perhaps I should lend you some books to explain things to you. They helped me a lot. Did they? Yes. Of course, I always knew I had something, but I thought it was an artistic temperament. I don't think I would ever have become a witch if my parents had let me go on the stage. Miss Holroyd, you don't really believe that Gillian has any powers. I know she has. She's done wonderful things. Those thunderstorms while she was at school on account of you-know-who. No idea who. Your friend, Mel Kittredge. Oh, nonsense. Gillian has never heard of Mel Kittredge. But of course she has. I told her myself that you were getting married. That's why she went after you with Pie Wacket. I beg your pardon? Oh, but I promise you, she wouldn't have used magic if she'd had time for the usual feminine methods, no matter how great enemies she and Miss Kittredge were. You mean she went after me because of Merle? Well, she thought you very attractive already. You've no idea how much she likes you. Or perhaps you have. Miss Holroyd, what are you trying to say? Well, Tony, with us, it's like the saints. Saints? Yes, only the other way round. At least, that's what the books say. Saints love everyone, just everyone, with no thought for themselves. But with us, it's just the contrary. Look, perhaps I'd better read some of those books of yours after all. Yes, Tony. Then you'll see how impractical, well, how impossible, really, love is. Not sex. Sex is allowed. In fact, it's almost encouraged. But, of course, you must know that. Miss Holroyd... Oh, no, Tony. <laughs> Can't I be Aunt Queenie now? Miss Holroyd, I don't think we'd better go on with this. Oh, dear. I haven't been too bold, have I? Pirewacket is behaving very strangely. I had to coax and coax him. I must go, darling. So nice to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tony. <laughs> dear. Gillian? There are some things I want to ask you. Have you told me the truth about yourself? Yes. And about us? Yes. Why? Well, you didn't tell me that you knew Merle Kittredge. Hmm? You did know her, didn't you? You were at school together. You knew about her and me, too, didn't you? You knew from the beginning, and that was why you went after me deliberately to spite her. No, not to spite her. Why, then? Because I wanted you. Because you were in love with me. How could I be in love with you? I didn't know you. Are you in love with me now? How does one tell if one's in love? One knows. But how? Could you go on without me? I think that's the best test. If I wasn't there, could you? I'd have to, wouldn't I? And there's the answer. But wouldn't I? Perhaps. But you shouldn't feel that you could. Why do you think this is hitting me as it is? To find out the whole thing had no meaning of any kind. To find that you just haven't been there the whole time. I don't think I knew what I was doing. That it would be like this. I'm sorry. That's fine. Oh, and you needn't pretend to cry, because you can't do that either, if I remember rightly. I'm not crying. Oh, so you believe it now? No, I don't believe a word of it, not a damned word. Can you take off spells that you put on, because I think you'd better? No, no, I wouldn't do that. No, I won't. I won't. All right. All right. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm getting the hell out of here. No, 
No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. I don't know how one deals with witches, but don't think, because you put a spell on me, that I am coming back. Because I'm not. Ever. Tony! The spell. He'll have to come back. Won't he? Taxi! No! No! Good God! No! Tony! No! 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 Dark now, eh? Never a dull moment around here. Where's Tony? Out somewhere. Oh, you two haven't had a quarrel or anything, have you? No, not a quarrel. Just a visitor. Thank you, Nicky. I say, what's happened to this pretty face? All the way from Africa and then smashed to pieces in lovely Knightsbridge. Someone's been a bit careless. No one has been careless. What a pity it got broken. It had come in so handy just now. Don't tell me Tony broke this. You know perfectly well who broke it. Nicky, you've seen him. Where? At Sid's room. Ah. Uh, he came straight there from you. Oh, it's no good you phoning him. He isn't there now. Where is he? Well, uh, that I'm afraid I can't tell you. He's not with Merle. No, but I think he thinks he ought to be. After all, perhaps he's still in love with her underneath. Don't think I haven't thought of that. I've been sitting here battling with the temptation to take the spell off. That's when I broke that mask. If I leave things as they are, he'll still be in love with me and loathe me for it. Yes, I don't think it was very clever of you to tell him about the spell. You know what it always says on love potions? Shake well and don't tell. Who's that? I'll see. It can't be Tony. Tony's got his key. Tony! Nicky, I want to talk to Gillian alone. Will you clear out? It won't take more than a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, of course. I'll go and get a packet of cigarettes around the corner. Tony, won't you please... Listen to me. I've got something to say and I want to say it quickly. I don't want to be here and I wouldn't be, only I was told I had to, so here I am. For your information, I've been to see Mrs. DePass. What for? For the hair of the dog that bit me. Not to get her to take my spell off. Oh, no! What else? And did she? Tony, did she? For whatever it was worth. How? With a whole lot of hocus-pocus and a very dirty old palette. From what I've seen, it's a lot more complicated to take a spell off than to put one on. It would be for her. And how do you feel now? I don't feel anything except bloody angry. Going all the way out to Ealing, to that messy little house called Cauldron's Corner, or whatever it was, having to stand hat in hand and learn a little poem, walk backwards round and round an oriental table. It's stomach-turning and humiliating. I know, don't tell me. To say nothing of being pounds out of pocket into the bargain. Why? What did she charge you? I don't want to go into it, any of it. The only reason that I came was that she said the thing wouldn't be complete until I'd seen you and told you. That was nice of her, to make that a condition. Well, now I have, and I can go. And by the way, she's arranged it so you can't undo this one. And how did she do that? We won't go into it, any of it. I've said what I had to say. What about... Merle. What about her? Are you going back to her, if she'll have you? At the moment, the only thing I'm going to do is drink myself into a stupor, forget the whole business. If I can, I'll say good night. I mean, goodbye. I'll never see you again. I see no reason why you should. Oh. Oh, yes. All settled. Well? What's happening now? Oh, it's revolting. He's getting mixed up with it, going to see her. Oh, he's too good for that sort of thing. Now, just a minute. He is. It's cheapening to him scrabbling about in the gutters of the supernatural with Mrs. De Pass. Are you going to let her get away with it? Come on back to us where you belong. This is what you get for mixing with human beings. Oh, mm. it's all right to make use of them. Have affairs with them if you want to, but anything else, no. So come back, Jill. Come to Natalie's party with me. Hmm? Uh, oh, um, come in. Gillian, I've 
got Mr. Redlich outside. How do you know Redlich? We met tonight at Mrs. De Passes, and then we left together when Tony went in. Hmm? Will you see him? Just for a minute. It's important. I don't think you should be cross with him, darling. Don't you? Bring him in. And is he going to need a drink? <laughs> Good evening, Miss Holroyd. It's very good of you to see me like this. It's you I have to thank for taking Tony out to Mrs. De Pass, isn't it, Mr. Redlich? Taking him to be cured of me. Oh, no, it wasn't that, Miss Holroyd. It was to put him back to where he was when he first met you. <laughs> you know, like in Shakespeare. Be as thou wast wont to be, see as thou wast wont to see. Midsummer Night's Dream. When they take off the power of the flower. And Titania falls out of love with the ass. Thank you for the comparison. Oh. But uh, uh, you'll need this. Oh, thanks. But what I want to explain is I couldn't help myself. I had an idea at the time that you mightn't altogether like it. And then when your aunt told me you'd always had a sort of hate on old Bianca... Bianca? Mrs. De Pass. Well... When I heard that, that you'd always been rivals, so to speak... We've I... never been rivals. That third-rate, vulgar, self-advertising, suburban sorceress... No, no, go slow, darling. You're <sighs> about the best in the business. It's people like her who make me wish we had the Inquisition back again. Do you know what she made him do? She made him come over here and tell me. <laughs> tell me what she'd done. Told him it was part of it. Now, look, Miss Holroyd... I don't know anything about that side of it. But I know you're not so bad yourself when it comes to revenge and that sort of thing. I, I don't want you to take it out on me. It was Tony's idea, the whole thing. All I did was to take him there. And now you're afraid of the consequences. Why don't you ask Mrs. De Pass to protect you if you think so highly of her? Or you could go to the local vicar and get me exorcised with bell, book and candle. Now, Miss Holroyd, don't get upset. I, I only did what I was asked to do. Suppose you've been asked to commit a murder or introduce someone to a murderer who'd do the job for money. Yes, Aunt Queenie? What does she charge for a little thing like this? Well, she varies her prices, dear, according to people's means. She asked me about Tony. And what did you tell her? I told her I thought he was quite well off. You see, I'd seen his passbook and letters from his stockbroker. And what is she going to rush him? She said she was going to ask a thousand pounds. What? <laughs> now, look, Miss Holroyd, I don't want to intrude on you in your hour of grief. But uh, put yourself in my place. I'd rather not, Mr. Redlich. But don't worry. I won't do anything to you. Oh, that's wonderful of you, Miss Holroyd. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just one thing more. About the book, Nicky said you'd sort of um, put a stop on it. Hmm? Well, well, now that Tony's not... Don't you think you might, I, I mean, well, just sort of release it? Oh, I don't mean right now, naturally, but sometime when you've nothing else on your mind. Mr. Redlich, don't you think from now on that you'd better stay away from this kind of thing? I don't think you've got the temperament for it. Or the nerve, apparently. Yes, I expect you're right. I only meant... Mr. Redlich, go away. Well, of course... Of course. Uh, and thanks a lot, anyway. Goodbye. All right. I've got a little job to do here. Oh, Bianca. She and her thousand pounds with her potions and her... It'll cost her a lot more than a thousand pounds to get out of what I'll do to her. She's got a lot of valuable Chinese rugs, you once told me. Hmm. And there are those Persian tapestries and the mink coat... Moths. And come to think of it, there's Merle, too. Be as thou wast wont to be. And how was that? In love with Merle Kittredge. No, she's not going to get him back. Not if I have anything to do with it. Where's Pie Wacket? Pie? Pie, Pie Wacket? Pie, where are you? 
I've never seen her like this before. Yes, but don't stop her. He's not there. Well then, darling, why don't you wait and think it over till the morning? I can do without him. Let's see what I've got. Moth, wormwood. Where's that stuff I got in Tobago? Aunt Queenie, take these. Bottle, bottle. Owl, mandrake. And Merle, what are you going to do to her? Why don't you transport her somewhere? And have Tony go after her? Then make her fall in love with someone else. Someone very unsuitable. The dustman, perhaps. Here. Here we are. I've been waiting for an opportunity to try this. What is it? Something really fancy. Aunt Queenie, could you put the rest back? For revenges. Now, what have we got of theirs? Have you got anything belonging to the anchor? Mrs. DePoz? I've got her photograph upstairs, but I don't think I should let you use that. I can write her name and use that. That'll do. It'll also do for Miss Poison Pen, too. This is a gala comeback. Too bad you can't make it a hat trick. Gillian, please, darling. Auntie, if you don't like it, you don't need to stay. Oh, let her see. Well, then she must keep quiet. Bianca, eh? Good. Merle, Emily Kittredge. Funny I should remember that it's Emily. Uh, things do come back when they're needed. Nicky, the big ashtray. Mm -hmm, yeah. Then put out the lights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Sayatux Sorami Elastot. Got a match? Mm, yes. Damn. It won't light. The stuff must be old or something. The paper won't light. Perhaps the ashtray is damp. That wouldn't make any difference. I'll use two this time. That's strange. Oh. What is it? We're not going on with this. Why not? You better go to your party, Nicky. Nothing else is going to happen here tonight. Look, look, something is really wrong. You, you haven't been defrosted, have you? No, of course not. Well, show me, prove it. I'll do no such thing. I'm tired. So, it is true after all. The old wives' tales are true. <laughs> well, well, well. Um, let me hear from you sometime, Jill. <laughs> when you're feeling better, maybe. Hmm? Good night, Aunt Queenie. Jill, what is it? Aunt Queenie, it is true. You mean you have lost your powers? You've fallen in love? Yes, I think so. I think it's happened to me. Oh, but darling, now, now. Yes, it's a good time, isn't it? I've been coming down with it all evening, only I didn't know what it was. That's it. I'm finished. Finished as a witch, anyway. Gillian, what is love like? You know, I've never had it. Is it wonderful? No, it's... awful. <laughs> oh, darling, tears. Real tears. Yes. And to think I've always envied people who could cry. It feels horrible. Oh, Aunt Queenie, I don't want to be human now. Gillian? <laughs> Jill? Auntie? I'm here. What about a drink, then? Don't mind if I fix one. No. Hmm. Where's my painting? Mm -mm. Nicky, dear, how nice. Thank you. Mm. It's been eight. 
ages. Oh, I'm exhausted. I, I really can't wait. You must stay till Gillian gets here. That's why I've asked you to come. You two can't go on like this, especially when she's so unhappy. And she's still in love with Tony. Yes, and he hasn't set foot in this house since that night. Well, what does Jill do with herself these days, anyway? Well, she has a job. A job? Wouldn't she rather be dead? Nicky, you mustn't say things like that. And look, dear, I don't want to scold you, but ever since your book died, you've been very discourteous to Sydney. Oh, Sydney? You know, Mr. Redlich. How? <laughs> since when? Oh, quite a little while. We have dinner every Wednesday. <laughs> Aunt Queenie. <coughs> Nicky. <laughs> oh, how nice. I haven't seen you since... Well, not since... What brought you here? Oh, I, I, I just thought I'd come around and say hello. Or rather, Aunt Queenie thought so. Oh, well, lovely. Come and sit down. Look, I, I, I can't today. Oh, just for a little, won't you? Please, Nicky, please stay. I'm late as it is. I've got a date. I, I'll come back some other time. I really will. All right. How's Pie Wacket? He ran away. Because of... I suppose so. Nothing for him to do here anymore, hmm? You know, Jill, you look different. I don't know how exactly, but... Better or worse? Well, that depends on your taste, I suppose. Uh, goodbye, Jill. Goodbye, Aunt Queenie. Aunt Queenie? He's upstairs. I saw him at his window as I came in. Just a glimpse of him. Did he see you? I don't know. I'm afraid he may have. Not afraid? I've been so thankful that he's not been in the place, that I've not bumped into him. And now the feeling that he's just up there is more than I can stand. Let's not have dinner here this evening. Let's go out. Let's go out now. I wish I could summon him. Then I could tell him what's happened to you, about your accident, and what caused it. Tell him? I'd go to any length to stop his finding out. But darling, why? Pride, I suppose. Or shame. They're new emotions to me. Or else they're very old ones in reverse. The other side of the coin. Oh, it's him. Uh, it is he. It can't be. Help me. Open the door. But don't leave me. Promise. Hello, Tony. <clears throat> Are you busy, or could I see you for a minute? I have Aunt Queenie here. Darling, I'm going to run along. Huh? I have a dinner engagement. I forgot to tell you. But I'll phone you later. See? Goodbye, Tony. Yeah. It's so lovely you dropped in. <clears throat> I'm afraid Miss Holroyd has the wrong idea what I came here for. This isn't a friendly visit. I didn't imagine that it was. I'm going to America... And I came down here to get some things I needed. Mm. I've only just discovered that I still have a flat here. I told my secretary directly after that night to move me out of here and never mention the damn place to me again. I didn't mean to be offensive. I understand. Today, I found my stuff is not in store at all. I'm stuck with this place. She hasn't been able to sublet it. I see your hand in this, and I don't intend to put up with it. What have I done? You know damn well what you've done. You've arranged it that way. What did the agents tell your secretary? I don't know what they told her. I didn't let her get that far. I intend to deal with this myself. You mean deal with me? I can't do anything about it. You mean you won't? If it will end this interview, I'll accept that. But I won't accept it. This is sheer vindictiveness, trying to hold me here. And I won't accept that. The whole thing is in your lease, as you could have found out if you'd been willing to look or listen, instead of jumping to insane conclusions. The freeholder here won't let me give a sublet clause. And if you think I arrange that in some way or other, I'll dispel that illusion too. I don't want you in this house. I'd far rather you were out of it. And I'll make that clear by cancelling your lease, if that will suit you. You will? Gladly. Done. Good. Fine. Finished. Thank you. Oh. What is it? I was wondering if my secretary would still be in the office. Do you want to phone and see? <laughs> On that phone? Well, if you prefer not to. It's not my favourite telephone, but I'd better risk it. <clears throat> I'm sorry I was rude. I was too. How have you been? 
Fine. And you? Fine. How's Pie Wacket? He... He's fine. Keeping busy? Him or me? Both of you. Oh, hello, Miss Bishop. I'm sorry I lost my temper. I'm at Miss Holroyd's flat. I've arranged to cancel the lease, so why don't I leave the key here with Miss Holroyd? Then you can come and pick it up. Is that all right? Certainly. Very well, then. What rent? Well, haven't you been... Well, why not? All right, I'll deal with it. Goodbye. I gather I owe you some rent. Three months, to be exact. No. No, you don't. Why not? I owe you far more than that. What do you owe me? Well, well, a thousand pounds, anyway. I beg your pardon? But Mrs. DePass charged you. That was outrageous. Well, I thought it was a little excessive myself, but I had nothing to compare it with. I wish I could repay it. I ought to, I know, but I can't. I don't see that it's your responsibility, but thank you for thinking of it. How is it going? I mean, how's Merle? She's fine, I think. You think? Didn't you go back to her? Or was that spoiled? No, I went back to her. Then what did happen? I'm sorry to be inquisitive, but it has been rather like not knowing the end of the picture. Yes, I can see that. Well, I went back, but... It didn't work. Because of me? What did you tell her about me? Nothing. Didn't she want to know how you had come to leave her? Yes, but I wouldn't go into it. Beyond the fact that I'd been, well, bewitched was the word I used. <laughs> I didn't say I meant it literally. And then something happened. Something she had done. I can't tell you what, but it finished things. It wasn't a letter... An anonymous letter, was it? What makes you ask that? Was that a habit of hers? Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a letter she had written to my partner while I was with you. Oh, yes. You said he had been acting strangely. Well, that was why. I'm sorry. Very sorry. You know, this is bad for you. What is? All this interest, this curiosity. You... Look different, too. How different? I don't know. There's something about you. There's something different about this flat, too. I've changed some things in the room. That's all the difference is. And look, please, you don't need to stay and be polite. Oh, yes, I have a great deal to do. <laughs> oh, my key. Uh, will you give it to my secretary? Of course. That reminds me there's something else. I've been wondering how I could go about returning it. It's the key to this flat. Will you excuse me for a moment? Here's the key. Put it down, will you? I've been wondering how I could go about returning this to you. What is it? Your locket. I gave you that. Under false pretenses. I felt worse about having that than over anything. Like a thief, almost. Please take it. Well, it doesn't mean all that much. It does to me, please. Very well, then. I feel better. And now, I think I'd like you to go. Yes. Yes. Don't stare at me. Please go. It's strange to look at you like this. The way I see you now is like a kind of double image. Someone who's completely new and strange and someone I've known intimately. Very intimately. It'd be hard to forget that. Here, especially. Do you mind going? Jill, you're blushing. No, of course I'm not. You're crying, too. All right, then. I'm crying. But I, I thought... You thought we couldn't, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. Are you sure? Quite sure. Well, I'm not. You're different. You're completely different. Why? What does it matter? It matters to me a hell of a lot. Tell me, are you not one anymore? Is that it? Is it? I've got to know. All right, then. I've lost my powers. Now you do know. I suppose you're entitled to that much satisfaction. And now will you please leave me alone? How did you lose them? They just 
went. Is that apt to happen? Under certain circumstances. What circumstances? There are all kinds. No, there's only one way. It was in that book of Redlich. Redlich doesn't know anything about it. But Nicky does, and he helped to write it. Tony, if you've ever had any regard for me, please go now. What's the point in going on at me like this? Because something has been happening since I came into this room. I want to be sure that it's the real thing this time. I will go now. And perhaps I won't go to America just yet. I'd like to give those images a, a chance to blend. I suppose you've got some idea what I'm talking about? I think so. It's been happening to me, too, for such a long time. Has it? I'm only human. Oh. Bell, Book and Candle by John Van Druten starred Beatty Edney as Gillian Holroyd and Stephen Moore as Anthony Henderson. Miss Holroyd, Gillian's aunt, was played by Anne Beach, Nicholas Holroyd by Nicholas Bolton, and Sidney Redlich by Michael N. Harper. Pie Wacket the Cat was played by Twiglet, Midge, and Bonaparte. The original music was by Mia Satirio. Bell, Book, and Candle was adapted and directed by Ned Shiaye.